So imagine this, you're at an amazing party, music is playing and everyone is laughing and having a great time, but there you are, feeling like you're just watching a movie of your own life. I've been in that pit of loneliness, surrounded by friends, yet feeling utterly alone and disconnected. And I tried to drown that loneliness in a sea of drinks, one shot after another, and that didn't work. It was a good way to numb myself to have fun in the moment, but the void only deepened the next day. Plagued by anxiety, I would be left feeling more miserable than ever. And it's a cycle that many of us know too well, where temporary fixes only magnify our inner turmoil. And please don't get me wrong, I love my friends. The problem was with me and not with them. I was having trouble connecting on small talk, letting loose and just having fun. I was getting in my own head, a head that loves to overthink. And if you've ever felt like me, you are not alone. Our society is currently sick. We are in a loneliness epidemic that is ravaging not only our mental health, but also having a very negative effect on our bodies. Earlier this year, the US Surgeon General released an advisory warning us that lacking social connection is as dangerous for our health as smoking 15 cigarettes or drinking six alcoholic drinks a day. In the report, Dr. Murthy warns that loneliness poses a health risk just as deadly as smoking. The consequences of poor connection include a 29% increased risk of heart disease, a 32% increased risk of stroke, and a 50% increased risk of developing dementia for older adults. These statistics are absolutely insane. And so today, I want to dive into what we can do to fight against loneliness and hopefully form meaningful relationships that leave us feeling fulfilled. We humans are social animals. We're wired to want community, to want to build relationships. And it's not just to help each other physically survive, but to nurture and share our feelings too. We need one another for our mental survival. Connection is as essential as the oxygen in our lungs. Without it, we are left with a mental void inside ourselves, one that desperately wants to be seen and touched by other people. Each one of us has a vast inner world that is looking for a space to be shown and expressed, a place without judgment, without scrutiny, a space to be vulnerable. Think of loneliness as a natural response from our bodies akin to hunger. Hunger drives us to nourish our bodies, loneliness drives us to seek social fulfillment. This need for connection is etched in our DNA, a survival mechanism honed over time, honed over many millennia. Our ancestors thrived on collaboration and emotional bonds. They needed it for survival. But as societies evolved, the emphasis shift from a collective existence, from celebrating each other as groups to celebrating individualism. And this intense shift to individualism has never been more present than it is now. The dawn of the digital age, spearheaded by the internet and now further revolutionized by AI, has transformed our world in a way our ancestors couldn't have imagined. But our essential biological needs remain unchanged. We still crave those deep, meaningful connections that our ancestors depended on. And the irony is, you would think that with social media, we would be more connected than ever before, but the results have been quite the opposite. Our sense of community has dissipated, and we have replaced communal gatherings with dopamine-driven Instagram posts. A striking revelation from Harvard's 2021 Making Caring Common Project survey unveils a widespread sense of isolation across the United States. A significant 36% of Americans grapple with intense feelings of loneliness. And this phenomenon is particularly pronounced among young adults, with a staggering 61% experiencing loneliness in the age groups 18 to 25. And according to a study conducted this year in the academic journal Nature, social isolation significantly increases the risk of premature death by a whole 32%, and loneliness increases the risk of premature death by 14 These are the extreme cases, but even the more minimal cases of loneliness, like 
not having anyone to talk to about something that is bursting to come out, whether it's really painful or joyous, can feel absolutely agonizing. We want to share our inner worlds. And these feelings all creep up on us out of nowhere. Life gets busy. Sometimes being social can feel very overwhelming. And before we know it, we end up feeling excluded and disconnected. Not because we want to be, but because building real connections can be really hard sometimes. It takes a lot of effort. And if you're already in a bad mental space, reaching out to people can feel absolutely impossible, especially if it's about something deeply personal to you. When we feel super lonely, our brains can get a bit weird. We start thinking we need to do something big, something wild to matter. Oftentimes, conspiracy theorists and political extremists are just lonely folks looking for a purpose. They're looking for something to fill the void. They get to those extremes due to feeling ostracized. I want to be clear, I don't want to stereotype or reduce every introvert or young male that has no, you know, is getting no interest from women as being a mass shooter. But when these men become isolated, they become much more prone to misogynistic content. They become much more prone to conspiracy theory, less likely to believe in climate change. They just become they just become poor citizens. I think there are lots of myths about the jihadi movement. One, that there's some ingenious, overarching set of organizers who bring these people into cells and in brainwashing. It's true that across the world where I find jihadis, they're mostly, as they were among the anarchists, as they were among the leftist movements of the 1960s and 1970s, they're mostly self-seekers who are looking for significance in transitional stages of their lives. Students, immigrants, people between jobs, between mates, who are making those bonds of friendship and being drawn to those ideas that will give them significance in life. And for certain reasons, some go on to the jihadi path, but I find that most of the people who do that span the normal distribution. The antidote to loneliness, I think, lies in two directions, outward in building communities and inward in self-reflection. So here are four ways I think we can combat loneliness when it slowly begins to creep in. Number one, practice vulnerability with other people. This step is probably the hardest out of the four and it is why I am starting with it, but being vulnerable with others is the key to connection. This doesn't mean you have to spill your innermost, darkest secrets to someone else, but you can start by doing something really fun like playing a board game or video game together, an activity that breaks the ice and pushes you a little bit outside of your comfort zone, but still feels safe. By being even a little vulnerable, you will develop a sense of trust and security with those you engage with and that is the biggest step to forming a very special bond. Number two, find a community. Expand your social circle and fill your connections with people who interest you. This could be joining a local book club, attending a community art class, or joining a sports team. Last year, one of the best things I did for myself was start a book club with my friends. Not only am I reading far more than I ever have before, but it also holds me accountable to nurture my love of reading and it gives me a sense of belonging and connection through exploring our mutual love of great storytelling. Number three, learn how to be alone. Loneliness and solitude are completely different states of mind and people often confuse them. Loneliness is a negative emotional state. It's the feeling of sadness or distress about being disconnected from others. Solitude, on the other hand, is a positive state of being. It's the choice to spend time by yourself and it can be extremely fulfilling. Learning to be alone without feeling lonely is a skill. It can be quite difficult to be alone with your thoughts, but learning to foster self-awareness is one of the best things you can do for your life. Some ways I love to practice solitude is by taking long walks where I meditate on my thoughts, but also journaling. Journaling helps me figure out what I'm really thinking and it helps ground me back in the here and now when things in my mind just get too crazy. 
You know, when I was growing up, there was this statement, I think it was Pascal, he said, you know, all of man's problems arise because he cannot sit by himself in a room for 30 minutes alone. Mm. And it's very true. I always needed to be stimulated. And when the iPhone came along, boredom was dead. I would never yeah. be bored again. I, even if I'm standing in line, I'm on my iPhone. And I thought it was great. And when I was a kid, I used to try and overclock my brain, be like, how many thoughts can I think at once? The answer is only one. But I would try to like think multiple thoughts at once. And I was yeah. proud of that. I was proud that my brain was always running. This engine was always moving. And it's a disease. It's actually the road to misery. And now that I'm older, I realize like you actually want to, again, rest your mind. You want to learn how to settle into your mind. Now, I look forward to solitary confinement. You leave me alone for a day, it'll be like the happiest day I've had in a while. Number four, reach out to loved ones. Remember the existing bonds that you have and work towards strengthening them. As a very introverted person, I know how hard it can be to nurture and take care of all of the connections that are very important to me. Sometimes I need a slight push to reach out to my dearest friends and family, but once I do it, I always feel so much better. Without it, there's always a void in the back of my mind. So try making it a goal every week to check in on the people who mean the most to you. It's not about the quantity of people you have in your life, but about the quality. I know that sounds cheesy, but nurture those that matter the most to you and make sure that they know they are loved. And your cup, I promise, will always be full. So if there's anything you take away from this video, it should be to remember that the path to fulfilling connections lies in understanding the roots of our loneliness and courageously stepping into the world of genuine, heartfelt interactions, not just with other people, but also with ourselves. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss my future uploads. I'm really excited to create more videos just like this and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.